just found this document, right? It's absolute madness. I'm, I'm going to have to share it with you, right? Check this. So it's basically, right, NXL. They've obviously been, you know, doing GCSE papers for so long. And, it, and the premise is simple, right? They've pretty much just collated loads of really hard exam questions, you know, that have been asked in the past and that students have found really difficult. But the interesting thing is they've actually included the percentage of students that got full marks. And it's mad. It's mad. Like, check this, right? So, yeah, standard stuff, right, in an exam. We're going to encompass to construct an angle of 30 degrees at P. Only 10% of students got that right. It's like, okay, 10%. But, like, let's just keep going. It just gets a bit mad. Like, look at this, 9.5%. So I think the percentage is just going down, right? But like this here, right? Make X the subject to this formula. It's not that crazy. It's not the easiest question in the world. 8.6%. That's not a lot at all, is it? It's less than 1 in 10. And it just, it just gets worse. Like, look at this, 7% of students can rearrange that. I think that is something that you should be able to do. Okay, a bit of a mad probability question. I've done some kind of disgusting questions on this, but like what we got here, 6.3. Right, what's it saying down at the end here? Let's, uh, let's play about. Okay, 6.1, we're getting there, we're getting there. What we got here, some vectors, regular hexagon, cheeky ratio, 5.5. Let's go further, let's go further. What we got? 2.4, what's this? Base radius, high 9x, something was melted down, made it to a sphere. Okay, okay, 2.4%. Eesh. Right, what else we got? Let's go down, let's go down. What we got here? 0.9? That's less than one in a hundred. That is mad. 0.9. Solid cone and solid hemisphere. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. 0.9. This is mad, mate. Let's see. What we... Oh, this is the last one. This is the last one. Here we go. What we got? Umar thinks, blah, 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 blah. 0.2. That's one in 500 students. If you were to take like your exam hall, there's probably less than 500 students doing this exam. So like, it could well be that not a single person in your exam hall got this whole, like, whole thing right. That's mad, one in 500. Whew, what we got down here? Oh, okay, so this is like when the initial papers were actually set. So you can see they're all from real papers. This was technically like the old spec GCSE, but it doesn't matter at all. It's the same stuff, it's like all relevant. This is mad. Look at this question here, man. One in 500 people. Should we do it? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let me get this into a whiteboard. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. All right, I've got to have a go at this one. Let's have a read of it. One in 500, man. Oh, okay. Umar thinks that a plus one squared is the same as a squared plus one. To be honest, mate, so does everyone else doing GCSE maths, and they really need to stop making this mistake. Like, I tell people all the time. The mistake is that, like, when you, when you have this, right, everyone thinks that it's that. And it's just not. Like, you need to stop doing this. This deserves a YouTube video in itself. But um, the reason it's not that is because you do this foil, don't you? The whole bracket is times in itself. So what we instead have to do is, you know, this times this, this times this, etc, etc. So that's why it's not the same. Um, so, it, so in this case, I mean, all you would really need to do is just look just like work it out what it what it should actually be, right? So you've got a plus one squared, you know, you do the foil. I'm sure more than a <laughs> one in 500 students got at least this first bit right. So what I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a times a, which is a squared, a times one, which is plus a, one times a, which is another plus a, and one times one, which is one. So this is actually the same as a squared plus two a plus one. So we can clearly see that if we compare this to a squared plus one, it's just not the same, is it? It's really just not the same. This is only true, in fact, um, for zero. Or maybe it's true for something else. But um, no, what is it? You know, if you take that away, you would get, yeah, it's only true for a equals zero. I can even write that. Only true for a equals zero. Okay, I'm assuming that that wasn't the, hard, the reason why everyone got this wrong. So let's see if it gets any weirder. Here are two right angle triangles, okay? Seems, seems reasonable. All the measurements are in centimeters. Okay, so one of them's like ABC, and then the other one's A plus one, B plus one, C plus one. And then we're told to show that two A plus two B plus one equals two C. Okay, I can I can kind of see why this would be quite difficult. I mean, 0.2% would probably suggest that it should be harder than this, but students have a really tough time when they see something, right? I don't know. It's like a load of a load of English, a load of words or like a diagram, and then it just says show that, and then just some random line of algebra. 
and they're just like, what? And then everyone starts like making fun of it and saying like, oh, the sun is over there. Show that X equals four or whatever. Because the thing is, they just they just can't see that this has anything to do with this line of maths. It's just like a completely different language, isn't it? So the tough thing is basically working out, well, how can we translate what we have on this diagram to, to maths, right? Like, what can I do to these diagrams to actually just get a line of algebra? As soon as I get some algebra, then I can kind of work with it and I can kind of say, okay, we do this, we do this. But until I got that, that's why it's so hard. So, I mean, the first thing that I'm seeing, right, we have right angle triangles. What applies to right angle triangles? Pythagoras. So, could I not just do Pythagoras on these and just see what happens? Probably, right? Let's see what happens. The first one is ABC, so super simple. For the first triangle, we know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? Because C is the hypotenuse. Sick, okay. Let's, let's park that for a sec. Let's go to the other one. To the other one, we do the same thing, but the length, so instead, all of these things plus one. So we have A plus one squared plus B plus one squared equals C plus one squared. Nothing too crazy. I can't yet exactly see how I'm going to get the answer, but let's just keep developing this and see what happens, right? Why don't I rearrange this? Not rearrange, kind of simplify, right? Expand the brackets out. Look what we did here. We actually found an expression for a plus one squared. So I know that this thing is just going to equal that, right? So it's going to be a squared plus two a plus one. B plus one squared is going to be the exact same thing, but with a b instead of an a, right? So plus b squared plus two b plus one equals, and the same thing here, c squared plus two c plus one. Okay. So that's kind of one of my equations. And now what can I do? Well, remember that we have this first equation here, right? So that is in some way going to be relevant, is it not? Look, a squared plus b squared, we know that is c squared. We've got an a squared plus b squared here. So wouldn't that just be the same as c squared? So this and this is going to turn into c squared, okay? And then let's write what else I have, you know, still got the 2a. Still got the 2b, let's get them in. And then, you know, let's let's take note of what we've done. We've used that, we've used that, we've used that, we've used that. Why don't I just, I've got one plus one, that's two, isn't it? So let's add a two to this, plus two. And then what have we got here? We've got c squared plus two c plus one. Okay, can we simplify this at all? Yeah, there's a c squared on both sides, so I can take c squared away. So what am I gonna be left with? I'm gonna be left with two a plus 2b plus 2 equals 2c plus 1. Still got this 1 chilling on the end. What am I going to do? Why don't I take it away from both sides? So take 1 away from the left-hand side. I'm going to get 2a plus 2b. 2 minus 1 is going to be plus 1 equals 2c. And I believe that that is my answer. So that was... It was hard. It was hard. I, I, it's, it surprises me that only 1 in 500 people got it. But yeah, it's hard. It's hard. There's one more part. A, B, and C cannot all be integers. Explain why. Well, it's clearly going to be something to do with this, isn't it? An integer is a whole number. So let's kind of have a think about what would happen here. I think it's going to be useful if I try and get some expression for one of these. What I mean by that is like, let's divide this by two, because then I'm going to get C on its own, right? If I divide everything by two, I'm going to get C equals, divide all of this by two, I'm going to get A plus B plus a half. Okay, that's the same thing. Just divided the equation by two, nothing crazy. So look at this here, right? A plus B plus a half. If A and B are integers, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start typing here because you would have to write in the exam, right? So I would say if A and B are integers, well, A plus B is an integer, right? If I take a whole number, add another whole number, I'm gonna get a whole number. There's no way I can't, right? Two plus four, you know what I mean? That's a whole number. So A plus B, this thing here, I just pointed, you can't see how my fingers going, but this thing here, that's also going to be an integer, right? So a plus b is an integer. That I think we can agree on. Okay, so that means that c is the same as some integer, right? This thing here is an integer. But then I've got plus a half. What happens if I have an integer plus a half? Well, that's not going to be an integer, is it? Think of any whole number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Add a half to it. It's going to be, you know, 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, 4.5. It's not going to be a whole number, is it? So if I take any integer, add a half to it, that is not going to be an integer. So C cannot be an integer, can it? So if A and B are integers, A plus B is an integer. 
So therefore, you know, a plus b plus a half is not an integer. And a plus b plus a half is equal to c, therefore c cannot be an integer. And that same logic would apply, you know, in any other way. If you say, okay, now assume a and c are integers, you would do the same thing, you would rearrange for b, you're always going to have this half. That's the thing, you're always going to have this half, therefore there's no way that they are all integers. Yeah, pretty mad this paper actually, pretty mad. I might do some more videos on it actually. Let me know, and let me know if you can find any grim ones. I really want to see ones, see if we can get worse than 0.2%, <laughs> basically. I assume though, if you would use AI Tutor, you would definitely be part of this 0.2%, and I can guarantee you that, because we teach these things all the time, and if you learn it correct, you should be fine with answering these types of questions. I'm Paddy, just thought that was a bit of an interesting one. I'll catch you in the next one.